Blackbusters. Alright, family, what's cracking? We are back for another episode of Blackbusters, the best movie review podcast in the world. In the world, Craig. In the world, Craig. In the world. I'm Craig. your host, Big Ja. Mm-hmm. Along with my co-host. Black ass tone. Black ass, black ass tone. tone. Black ass tone. That's what they call me. That's, That's what, what they call they, you. That's my straight name. Black. Hey man. Black ass tone. Um, we are doing another episode. And this is going to be an interesting episode, man. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting. Um, I have a lot of uh, a lot of takes, a lot of yeah. uh, a lot of you know uh, critique. That's what we're doing. Yeah, reviewing it, critiquing it, everything. Um, we are doing meet the blacks. Meet the blacks. We get straight to it. We do meet, meet the, the blacks. blacks. Yeah, starring Mike Epps. You know what I'm saying? Shout the out to Mike Epps. Mike Epps. Shout out to Mike Epps. Shout out to Little Duval or Lil yep. Duval, Michael Blackson, Gary Owen, Brisha Webb, um, excuse me, Zule Henoa or Hanau, <laughs> Charlie Murphy, King Batch is in there, bad boy, D Ray Davis, Lavelle Crawford, Paul Mike Mookie Tyson is in this, Mike Tyson is in this bad boy, George Lopez. Ah, uh, man, it's a lot of people in this project. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so meet the blacks. Ah, uh, ew. Well, it's a lot going on, man. Yeah, man. Literally a lot going on. Tiny from Escape is in it. Tiny Harris. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right, right. So, Meet the Blacks is very, it pretty much uh, a parody on the TV, the movie Purge. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Um, meet uh, Carl Black is played by Mike Epps. He's a family man from Chicago. The, the rough side, the the rough city of Chicago. He's from there. He has a, a wife and two kids. Um, and he moves. He's a he has a wiring. He's an electrician, so he has a wiring company that he does like jobs on around the city. Mm -hmm. And this particular job, he had a job with a at a drug dealer's house, a drug lord's house named Key Key Flow, right? Yep. And while he's doing the wiring job at the house. The police kick in the door, arrest Key Flo, because he's a drug lord, and basically exposes some money from the house that Key Flo was hiding in the house. And Mike Epps' character, Carl, uh, Carl Black, found this money. Key Flo's in jail. So Carl mm -hmm. Flo, I mean, Carl, Carl uh, Black takes the money and the drugs, which is, which is like a lot of weed, and flees to California. He just Beverly did Beverly Hills, California. Beverly Hills, California. He gets up out of Dodge, takes his family and his new wife, um, his new wife uh, to um, Beverly Hills, and he lives in a big mansion. He just uproots his family and changes his life and his circumstances and his environment all within a couple of days. He moves yeah. to Beverly Hills, and now he's living in this mansion, and that's where the, the movie starts, was him coming into his mansion, like driving up. You know, most... Gated communities have like a toll, a security toll booth, a security booth before you walk into, before you can drive or walk into the the the, uh, the community. And mm -hmm. he pulls up and he's like, "What's up, man?" And the security guy is a black dude. And that scene off top was was weird to me. Yeah. Uh, interesting movie, man. Uh, you know, here's like here's the thing with these movies, job. Um, I'm always going to appreciate the try. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to appreciate the try. Um, we love our movies and our actors and our comedians so much that I always want to see them work. And I always want to see them try. Not every black movie is going to be a home run. There will be some triples. There'll be some doubles. There'll be some singles. And there will be some flyouts, some pop outs. This is a pop out movie. Right. Like, you know, this is this is a pop out movie. What's surprising about it is it's a pop out movie with so much talent. Right. Like it's it's so much talent, but the, it's just a mess of a movie. The like it's, it's 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 the it's master. like was written in pencil. It was yeah. written in pencil. I don't know. I, I didn't feel like they knew what they were doing. Any day on the set, it was just kind of like show up and talk right and when it works and there are times where it does work where does mike epps it? is cooking and you know 
But for the most part, I could tell that like this movie doesn't know how to end. It doesn't know how to begin. It doesn't know who its villain is. You know, it's just it was just kind of all over the place for me. So you got a movie, and it's a lot of talent, but it's a lot of ta- it's a lot of talented stand up comedians. Yeah. Um, the one the actor with the the stand up comedian with the most acting acting chops acting experience is Mike Epps. Mm-hmm. He's a stand up comedian, but he's also an actor. He's acted for years. Um, yeah. A little Duvall's done a few things. Gary Owens done a few things here and there, but nothing on the level of uh, on the consistency level of Mike Epps. Um, Michael Blackson uh, is basically playing the guy from Friday. Yeah. Um, Same character. He's that's the guy. Okay. Yeah. But that's that's his character off top. That's his character on stage, too. Um, Mike Epps is basically Day Day. He's, Carl Black is literally Day Day. Yeah, it's a grown up Day Day. <laughs> grown up Day Day. Um, <laughs> yeah. No difference. There's no difference. Right. Um, uh, even as a father, I don't believe him as a father, I don't believe him as a husband. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it just doesn't. In the, the script is that the, the the writing either the script is bad or the script was okay, but they just did they they went off script and just did what they wanted to do. That's what it feels like. It feels like yeah, like even like nothing is consistent. Nothing stays the same. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like uh, for one, casting wise, the little boy being um oh, is fine. Um, Brisha Webb, who is a very talented woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, talented actress. Um, she should have been the wife. Yeah, very. She's yeah, the same, yeah. She's the same age as the actual wife. Yeah, you know, four <laughs> right. year difference. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, Zene, uh, right. Uh, Zule, uh, Zule, uh her uh, her character, her in real life, she's 44, and Brisha Webb is 40. Brisha Webb is yeah. playing um, uh, Mike Epps' daughter, Supposed and I'm a teenage daughter. Teenage daughter. That's crazy. Yeah. Even though she looks very young, don't get it twisted. Mm-hmm. Risha Webb looks amazing. She's beautiful, very attractive woman, but she doesn't look like a teenager. She looks like a young. She looks like a uh, like she should have been a young executive in two can play that game type thing. She's, right. She, she looks. Uh, she doesn't sound. She's trying to sound like a young teenager, but she does. It looks like she's. Yeah, it just like. Why is she in this movie as a teenage daughter? Right. I right. know she's a new face. She's not like. Um. She a new face meaning like she's not not a a a, a veteran actress like a Lisa Ray or a Sanaa Lathan or Taraji mm-hmm. P. She's younger than them as well, but she's also she's in that weird stage where she's you know done done a few things and but hasn't but hasn't really established herself as a household name just yet. Right, and she, she wants to work any kind of role, huh? And she wants to work. She wants and to work. I imagine when she saw, oh shit, Mike Epps is is, is attached to this. Okay. Mike Epps, Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy is attached to I'm this. In. I'm in. This could be one of them ones, right? right? Like, you know, this could this could be a could be, mm-hmm. one of those one of those legendary kind of classic kind of movies. Right. Right. So it makes sense that it makes sense that she would take it. You know, like inside this movie, job is a it's a I feel like there's a good movie in there, but like like I thought that like the stuff with D Ray was really funny, right? Uh-huh. Um, I even thought like some of the stuff with, with Mike Tyson was really funny. Mike, um, Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson, that was hilarious. It was corny, but it was hilarious. It was funny. It was, it was funny. It was funny. Yeah, Dude, it, this- it just like it. It feels like either either the script or the director, because I could tell that like some shots from the director. I was like, I don't know if the director knows what they're doing here. Or what they're or what they're trying to do. Like it's almost like they didn't shoot enough footage to get to an hour and a half, right? So they would linger on shots. Like, you know, you like you you got you got Gary Owen just riffing for five minutes at a time. And, you know, he's doing the best that he can, but it's not hilarious, right? You get Lavelle Crawford on there, he's riffing for five minutes at a time. You get Charlie Murphy on there. He's riffing for five minutes at a time. And it's just like, oh, these characters don't have anything to say. Th- like, they haven't been given any lines that's in support of the plot. The plot and in and of itself doesn't make any sense. There was not enough money in that safe to buy that house. 
<laughs> right. Right. Look, look, look about thirty thousand dollars in some weed. Come so on. you know the fact that they're there don't make no sense. So it's it's just like the the director and the script didn't do these actors any favors. Right. And there's the the one thing I have to say. Um, let me just say, let me talk, let me say some positive shit first. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the fact that whoever produced this movie, put this movie together, mm-hmm. is trying to throw as many comedians as they can and throw them a shot. Yep. I think even Michael Blackson, putting Black, Michael Blackson in this project was, I know him, he's the homie. There's no reason for him to be in there. That character yep. did not need to be, this African guy did not, who's serving, who's serving a, a warrant or something like that. Yeah, a lawsuit or something. What do you do? And he's from Chicago. Yeah. They followed him. He, he he followed him from Chicago to California. It doesn't, it doesn't work. How does everybody um, have the address? How how is he there before <laughs> he gets there? Right. Um. Right. <laughs> why does the security guard? If, if this is a a legitimate a legitimate house uh house community a mansion community, the security guard would have his name and his ID on right. the roster. So that that's whole, the you, that's an easy like. If Mike Epps his character has such difficulty getting in, and the guy acts the security guard acts like he doesn't know who he is, yet he just let the uh Michael Blackson in <laughs> like prior to. That's a uh, that's, more blacker dude. Yeah, you know, that's man. unforgivable. <laughs> that's the continuity on that is just that's that's bad. That's that's when boring. when when the the wife uh is outside getting her nails done and by the Asian chick who barely speaks English. And then Mike Epps comes over and grabs her head and tries to give her. It seemed like like she's giving him dome. Mm-hmm. I said, "What are we doing, bro? What what what, what is this?" <laughs> and again, <laughs> to and again, this not not to. I, I want to double down on on what you just said. We're not gonna spend. We we're gonna spend about forty hours nitpicking in this movie. But this is what minutes. the this is this is what the movie gave us. Right now, again. I'm not saying that this movie shouldn't be made. Again, I appreciate the try. I appreciate the effort. Somebody had an idea and a concept, and they were able to secure budget to execute that project. All I'm saying is, is that it's a it's a pop out. Like it's 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 it it didn't work, right? Like you know, I get the concept. I I get what they were trying to do, um, but it it just didn't work, and that's okay. To be like it didn't work. It doesn't mean that like I don't like any of these actors any less. It just means that like that particular at bat, you guys put it was it was a, it was a pop out, right? It was an easy out yeah. um, because there's just so much in the movie that just doesn't work. And I and I wonder like and and did anybody know that it didn't work? Like did anybody stop and just go like you know these things don't don't connect, don't make sense. You know, right. when when Lil Duvall's character is captured by the people, and then the next time you see him, he's free, right? And it's just like that doesn't make sense, right? Like, you know, it just it just didn't make sense. It just didn't it's make terrible. sense. It yeah. was that was that was a terrible thing I saw when he just disappeared and he just popped up after getting yeah after uh for one he got kicked out the house. Yeah, how to get back in? And he got back in. Then he gets snatched out and he got back in again. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying, um, the son thinks he's a vampire. Why is that important? It, it, Cause it, it does because it, it never comes into play. It never comes into play. Um, why is so? I guess we have to keep Brisha Webb's character busy at some time. So Batch is in the movie. Um, which is like, whoa, this is it's a bad script and probably possibly <laughs> it's bad directing too because. Yeah, Rich Webb and King Batch, <clears throat> Andrew Bachelor, <clears throat> excuse me, um, did a, a parody on Fences, a Fences parody. I don't know if you ever seen that. Mm-mm. Um, it was uh, you know, the Fences, the movie with uh, yep. Violet Davis yep. and Denzel Washington. They did a parody on that. Maybe I forget how long it was. Maybe ten minutes or longer. Brilliant, brilliant, executed m- amazingly. Rich Webb murdered that. You know what I'm saying? The, um, mm-hmm. uh, Batch murdered that. It was directed well. He directed it, but he's a director. Like they probably should have had Batch direct this project. Would have been you know a lot saying? different, maybe. Yeah. It, it was just the time. It, it just the performances were dead on, and they were so silly. It was so goofy, but it was so funny and dope. Now, 
he's he he came out there from Chicago on the Greyhound bus, and he's so disrespectful about the father, and it just, it seemed like it seemed like he the director just let them. I wouldn't even be surprised if he wasn't even supposed to be in the movie. <laughs> right. But then he just pulled up and like, hey, you the homie, come on, get in yeah. there. Yeah. And just it felt like the script was all punchlines and no substance. Yes. Even with even with Mike Epps, hey, everything's a bag. He's calling them and, and Mike Epps is using the same bag from Friday, calling um African uh calling um Michael Blackson Bishop Tutu and all that stuff and mm-hmm. Idi Ami. Those are all jokes we've heard before already. So either they regurgitating them or he's just ad libbing and going off the dome and bringing up the old yeah. jokes he's always been saying. It feels freestyle. Like like it felt like like they were just kind of ad libbing the whole movie. Um and again, if it works, it works. It just it worked in spurts. Like a couple of like if you're a Mike Epps fan, this movie might not be as bad as it might be for others because you like the way Mike Epps cooks. Like you like the way he talks. You like the way that he jokes. Right. But it was not all of them hit again. Like there were jokes that we saw before. Yeah. And because it's kind of like a mess of a movie around him, I can't even really enjoy the jokes because they're, they kind of yeah. have no purpose. Yeah. Right? They just like, thrown they, together. They just, yeah. They just kind of thrown together. Like you know, like box work. Like the, he's oversexed. He's jacking off in the in 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 the bathroom. Grown and I'm just like, this doesn't make any sense. Like this character doesn't make any sense. So Cronut and Bo- uh, Cronut and and his name is Freeze or uh, Freeze, right? The bachelor's mm-hmm. name is, uh, is Freeze. They're like the same type of dude. Freeze is over overly free. They're like overly horny, like you said. Yeah. Freeze is jacking off in the in the shower and. And the cronut is at the window, looking at at the wife in the bathing Checking suit. off the wife, like looking right. his tongue at her. Yeah, like, like he's some kind of deviant. And then yeah. when you talk to him, when, when Mike Evans finally talks to him in the garage, he a regular guy. He's like, "Hey man, you know, I've been locked up two years, like, bro. He's supposed to be retarded, bro. Yeah, he's supposed to yeah. be something's wrong with him. Like, yeah, and, yeah. and it's like, okay, that's over the top. Why? Why can't he just be creepy? And he just be, why can't he just be, be flirtatious or something? And it's not Make funny. It funnier. It's not. Funny. It's not funny. Yeah. Like that, I mean, that's the thing. The thing is, is that like, like, like you said, you have comedians in there and, and they have no script to go off of. Right. Like, you know, like it almost could have been like, like Epps was, was performing at the laugh factory mm-hmm. and Lavelle Crawford was there that night. And he was like, listen, why don't you come to the set tomorrow? Uh-huh. Yeah. Come on through. Right. Like, you know, we're going to give you something to do. We're going to, you know, basically let you talk shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'll, we'll make up something. We'll make up a reason why you're there. Right. So like everybody that has any kind of beef with, with Mike Epps' character shows up at this house. So we have, t- so first of all, we have too many villains. Too we have many. too many villains. I know it's a purge, but it's like, come on, man. It's too many villains. Like we've got our main villain who's supposed to be Charlie Murphy's character, Keyflo. But he's only in the movie one scene. They only, they only pay for him to be in there for one scene, probably. Right. For one you know, day. So, so it's just kind of it, like it's like spread it around. Keith yeah. Flo is a great villain. Keith Flo is hilarious. Charlie Murphy is hilarious. That character, yo, Gusto. He's Gusto from CB4. Mm-hmm. That character is hilarious. It's funny. Keep him that. And he could be the last villain that that got out of jail early. And then just the 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 introducing of him getting out of jail. He's like Keith Flo, blah blah blah. He's like, what you mean Keith Flo? I thought he was in jail for years. Now nah, he got out of jail already. That's that's just microwave. This is an, oh, he's a drug lord. Why is he getting out of jail so soon? Yeah, out of prison. Like this all happened in, within a week. Like he left Chicago ago, less than a week ago. And everybody has the address. Everybody has the address. <laughs> and <laughs> and he's just in the house chilling. Like yeah, in the house chilling with a gun. And he's like uh. What about to say? When when when, when the key flow is, is sitting here talking about um, yeah man, uh, you that I need my money, man. I need my money. Just go get the money, bro. You found right. out. You caught. Right. Yeah, like, but now they fight each other, and, and then he dies. He gets in, he gets stabbed by a coat rack. Yeah. Not even Impaled a, shark, by a, coat, a rack. coat rack. Right. It's just ah, it, it, yeah. Whoever did this. Thought they could just be super silly. They probably thought it was, this is more like on the uh, screen 
a scary movie. Yeah, scary movie ish more than it was. Um, men, uh, don't be a menace. Right. The Wayne's right. brothers did this. This should be done better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I don't want to keep. I I I'm, I'm, I have to. That's the, the job is to critique the film. But like you said, he, he they tried. Deion Taylor is the director and the writer, along with another writer, uh, Deion Taylor and Nicole Damasi. They wrote. What this would project. you have done? What would you have done differently with this movie, Ja? Okay. For one, I would have uh, showed the Chicago situation. I would show him stealing the money and um, building and, and um and building up going to the uh and, and deciding to move to uh, the flee to California, Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I would have made the uh the wife Mexican or she was Colombian or something like that. Um, they're the blacks. Meet the blacks. She, she, they should have been a whole black family. Her right. being Spanish made no. It, it, it didn't. It wasn't necessary. Other than that's, other than adding color to the cast, that's fine. Having adding no, color to the cast. No disrespect. It felt a little casting couches, right? Yeah, like you know, on, like 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 somebody was like, she's fine, and I'm putting her in the movie because she's fine. And I'm gonna. And I'm going to. I'm going to. Uh, Validate the film script by having better moments between Zule and um, the daughter Ali. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when she came over there and gave her that necklace, that was like you could tell they that was a terrible way of coming over there to talk to the, the daughter. <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying, and I'm right. saying, I'm not trying to be your mother. And um, it was just so fast. It was goofy. It was silly. Yeah, should have had a moment there. They moved you know too quick. It, inside of a comedy, I get it. But like even that was 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 it, it just there was no heart there's no soul in the movie, mm-hmm. I didn't believe the characters and then and the way they would get mad at the dad or Carl Carl Black and like, um my dad, my mom's dead and you always yell at me and he walks off storms like, off <laughs> the mom right. died the mom being dead when did she die, yeah when he never how long yeah he never talks about his dead wife, he never talks to his son about I'm sorry I know you I know it's, it's tough for you they never had any family moments. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and so, and I, I, and I believe that Mike Epps can do that because I've seen him do. Uh, he, he's on the Upshaws. I seen him. I, play, I was with him on the Upshaws. Yeah, and he plays a father. I believe him. He's still silly, but like I don't think they took enough time. The director took enough time to get him and the other cast members to really seem like a family. Yeah, it, it, you know it, what I'm saying. It reminds me of like back in high school, like when, like you get assigned the reading. Yeah. And then you don't do the reading and you get called on <laughs> and you just kind of like, like, it's obvious that you didn't do the reading, right. but you're still trying to answer the question. Yeah. Um, that's kind of like, it's, it's, they just needed more. Like, I think that the movie needed solid directing. I think it needed a rewrite. I think the idea of black people in the purge is a fantastic concept. It's, it's a great concept. Um, the concept was executed better by the blackening, right? Like it's, it's a, it's a similar comparison. Yeah. The blackening did better what would black people do in this situation much better than meet the blacks did. Right. Much better than meet the blacks did. And just for and the I record, it, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, continue, continue. No, no, you got it. Um, I would say, I would, Zule wouldn't be, she wouldn't be there. She added no value. She was a very attractive woman. And she wasn't a bad actress necessarily. Like she did her seriousness when she was like talking to um, Carl Black, like, baby, you lied to me or, or what's going on? Can we afford this house? Do we have the money? That's yeah. such a weird scene because the scene right before that, she was getting her nails done. Right. And she didn't have a care in the world. Now all of a sudden she's, she's uh, concerned about them living in this mansion and where, where, where's the money coming from? Right. It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's like two different scripts. Is she, the, is she the wife? Is she the Peggy Bundy that doesn't care about anything but looking good and get their nails done mm-hmm. or is she the, the 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 legitimate wife that has a mind and a brain it's like what's going on something doesn't, something doesn't seem right husband like are we okay here right. she switched up so fast it didn't make sense i don't i don't know what kind of character she is what kind of woman she is yeah you see the yeah. side chick that the daughter kept calling her you the side chick you're not my mom you're just a chick that dad fell in love with the dad likes because you got he got some money and now you own him like where did she come from how long have they been together there's no character mm-hmm. development at all yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. There's no reason why. Why if, if the boy thinks he's a vampire, why is he? Why does he think that? Was the last time his mom took him to a scary movie, and that's the last thing he saw was Dracula or something? Like mm-hmm. what? It, it, I would have tied the, the script was bad. This uh, so I would have for one rewrote the script. 
Yeah. Um, not have so many stars in there. It can be stand-up comedians and actual actors. Because Zule, if Regina Hall was the, the wife, then there's funny there. There's beauty there. There's great acting. And then there's still funny. The wife wasn't funny at all. So, it, so she was like, point. Ali was funny. Grisha Webb was funny. She had funny moments. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of a sudden. Great point. And even when Batch, I realized Freeze's character, he came from Chicago to Beverly Hills to kill the dad, mm-hmm. to purge. Yeah. But it was, it, okay, but what are you doing? I'm purging your dad. I'm purging. Like, it, it should have came differently. Hey, man, I have finally had the opportunity to kill your dad, and I'm taking it. You know what I'm right. saying? It, 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 uh, those couple lines, it was just bad executed, bad performances. Um, so we're very too, too, too slapstick. Yeah. To where yeah. It, it didn't work for me. You know what and, I'm saying? And our characters have no idea what the purge is. Or they or they, they bounce back and forth from knowing what it is to not knowing myth. what it it's is. It's bullshit. It's a joke. Right. Right. It's a joke, but it's been going on for it's just not the first year. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> exactly. Um, I think the white people from Beverly Hills was like, yeah, last year the purge y'all didn't hear about the last people in this house? Right. They, right. they didn't make it through the purge. So this happened last year in Beverly Hills, but not in Chicago? I doubt it. Yeah. Yeah, I think so it, I think it, you're right. There's so many holes in the, in the script. It's, it's crazy. So for me, I usually get frustrated when I watch movies like this that don't make sense, that nothing ties together. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it just it's just crazy for me. Lavelle, Lavelle Crawford gets in there. It just makes, like you said, everybody, everyone's just riffing. Um, no real reason. There's a clan member in there. It's like, come on, bro. Yeah. yeah. What's, what, what are we doing? And then Mike Epps comes out as a clan member, but the guy doesn't recognize him as a clan. Doesn't see that he's a black dude. His arms are black. His hands are black. And then right. he snatches off the mask, off the right. off the gown, and knocks it, knocks him out. Like, come on, bro. It, yeah. it, it was just. And then we got Paul Mooney who shows up, and it's just kind of like, what's Paul Mooney a doing? Bit. Right. Very cheap, man. Very cheap. It just, yeah. It was a, it, it was, was a, a, a ensemble cast of. Just throwing people together. Let's get. Yeah, we have access to Paul. Paul Mooney come down here for like three hours. We'll get you a hair and makeup. You know what I'm saying? We'll pay you about five thousand dollars if that. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they paid him, and yeah. just come in here and, and stand and put this cloak on this this uh this KKK mask on. And when you take it off, you say your you say your jokes, right? And then you get up out of there. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. This movie about to be so funny. We got Paul Mooney, Laval Crawford, Lavelle Crawford, Gary Owens, uh, Lil Duval, Charlie Murphy. It's about to be. That on paper sounds hilarious. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. not. Yeah. It's it like not. it's like they, they rented the house. They had the house. And I think that you could have done. I think like, like imagine if like me and you, like we put up the money to rent the house mm-hmm. and we're like, we're going to do a, you know, that a genre type movie. It's going to be parody. It's going to be satire. And it's about, a you know, a family of black people stuck in the house in Beverly Hills during the purge. I think we would have came up with different ideas. Yes. Right. I think, I think we would have came up with different ideas. And I think this movie would have been, this movie has way too many characters for one, way too many characters. So you don't even really get any suspense out of it. Right, like you know, there's no real like it's popping up one after the other. As soon as yeah. one person dies, the next thing that you see somebody coming down the hallway with a gun. I'm like, who's mm-hmm. that person? Right, you know what I'm saying right. Um, so I think like it has too many characters, it has too many villains. Right, like it it, yeah. it has way too many villains. So if they focused in on on one villain, it it could work. I mean, literally, they've got Gary Owen Owen standing in in a room you know, for maybe 10 minutes worth of screen time. Just talking, <laughs> right? Just, just, I'm just, say to me. some of it's not. Just mm-hmm. talking. And then, and then the movie almost like comes to a sprinting conclusion where like in the course of like four minutes, like everybody dies in the garage, right? right. So like that happens super quick. We've got the random neighborhood watch guy who shows up and it's just, you know, and it's just like, okay, like he's like a Zimmerman type, right? Like, you know, and he shows up and dies at the end and then the neighbors show up and die at the end. And it's just kind of like, I, I, I was watching this job and I was like, 
is this the worst movie I've ever seen? I sat here and said, wow. Is this close to Fat Beach? <laughs> Man, this movie makes Roll Bounce seem like a 5.5. Oh, my God, man. Not Roll Bounce, a uh, lottery ticket. Yeah. You know, we we, we, we kind of jumped on Lottery Ticket's ass. A lottery Ticket has a story. As a story, is and a lot of great execution. Mm-hmm. A lot of great execution. Yeah. The script might not have been the best, but the script was so much better. So much, so better. much better. And Lottery Ticket was directed better. Yeah, it was. Shot better, directed better. What cameras did they shoot? What cameras did they shoot on Meet the Blacks? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Who lit? Who lit it? You can tell. Yeah. But I would you would think that this is a Hollywood film because of the names in it, but like I feel like the budget was very low. Uh, they only had access to the house. That's why they didn't shoot the Chicago part. They didn't shoot in Chicago. They didn't shoot anything, and yeah. all the 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 special effects was crazy. Like the the gun play outside, people screaming, but you see nobody outside. Yeah, uh, that's crazy. And then when you do, when you did see like a, a camera footage, a, a, a ring camera footage of outside, everybody's just walking through the city. It, it, it just looked cheap, looked yeah. corny, looked staged, like like they, they were on the set, like on the Warner Brothers set. Yeah. And the thing is, Ja, is that when it's our movies, when it's black movies, like sometimes a movie can be so bad that it ends up being good. Mm-hmm. Right, like, like um, it's so ridiculous. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to, get, I'm trying to think of a movie like that. <laughs> that, um, like, like to me, like Penitentiary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, like yeah. you know, like it's, it's so, it's so poor. Penitentiary. <laughs> that this is it, one like, butt I could yeah. never cut. Right, that that it, uh, that it comes back. Like at least there's lines in it, or certain right. things one in it is. that, like you know, like bring it back, and you're like, you know, this movie is ridiculous, but like. You know, like like people that like half baked with Dave Chappelle, yeah. right? Yeah. Like to me, that's like I haven't watched that movie in a while. It's not a blockbuster. Um, I remember it being bad. I don't think so. Whoa, whoa, I don't whoa, think whoa, half. Whoa. Baked. I that's a great. Off. I'll finish. I'll finish your finish on your, your statement, and I'll come back to that. Yeah. Um. But it's you almost like what I remember is I remember it being bad. Like I remember it being. I remember it being bad. But I remember it being bad enough to watch multiple times, yes. right? Like you know, yes. because of the ridiculousness of, yes. of it all. Um, mm-hmm. Meet the Blacks doesn't. There's no rewatchability here. No. There's no like singular performance here. There's not like a scene that's just like you know, and it's just kind of like it was a nice try. It was a it was yeah. a nice. It was a you took an at bat. You got to take this L. You got to take this L. Because it's not that we demand better, but for the talent that was involved in that movie, we did not get the most out of the talent. They weren't we like they were a bunch of Leslies. Yeah. Like yeah. As, as dope, as funny as Leslie is, we didn't see them shine a lottery ticket. Yeah. I didn't see um Cronut really do much in there. Cronut and and it kind of shows me that. But I would think that Mike Epps in this film should have been a cronut. That's usually the character he plays. Mm-hmm. And usually his character, Carl Black, would be um Carl Black would be probably Ice Cube. Yeah. Or uh even though Mike Ice Cube is not a funny guy, but he's the straight he would be the straight man. He'd be like the same character he plays Calvin in Barbershop. And Cronut would be like the, the silly, goofy um, sidekick or cousin or little homie. Because Mike Epps was too silly. He was not straight man at all. There was no seriousness. There was no... Yeah. I didn't believe him. I didn't believe that that guy owned his own business. He didn't seem <laughs> right. like the kind of person that owns a wiring company. Right. He right. seemed that like he was just as dumb as Cronut. Yeah, exactly. Think about it. He came out and sexually harassed the damn nail tech on the side of the pool. He's mm-hmm. no different than Cronut. He's no different than Bats jacking off in the, and behind the shower curtain. The same fucking character. You're right. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, 
and as opposed to establishing Mike's, uh, Mike Epps' character, which I believe he, I know he can do. I've seen him do it with with uh, the Upshaws. Uh, he can play a serious guy that has funny moments and says funny yeah. things. And it and it looked like he was, to my knowledge, this is his first time as the leading man. Right. Normally so. he plays a supporting character. He plays a. So this is his first time at the leading man, and it felt like he was taking it serious. Right. Like like it it felt like. Like he still got to do his jokes, but when he was supposed to play scared, like you know, he would. It's it, it didn't seem like he was just like whatever. What the fuck about this movie? I, see, I think different. Even you think when, it was the opposite when he first pulled up to the the security booth. Yeah, he was like, ah! I said, what we what are we doing? Remember when he started <laughs> throwing the fit? Yeah, hey man, I live here, man. Come on, yeah. nigga, you don't live here. Yeah. That was funny when the security guy was like, come on, my nigga, ain't no niggas living here, bro. Stop. Yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> Right. He was like, what are you talking about? I, live here. I said, okay, he's day day. Hey, that's that that's not leading man. He's mm-hmm. too goofy already. It's the first scene. And then yeah. he's like, fuck yo. And he ran and, and scored it off. That's that's too slapstick. That's not the man. Like, yeah. And then, then he mm-hmm. gets and so then he gets to the house and he's going back and forth with the uh with the um with black uh, Michael Blackson as opposed to like, what are you doing? Like, he, there was no I his serious moments didn't seem serious. It was like maybe two, yeah, twelve percent serious, and the rest is cracking jokes, I, bagging on Prona, making yeah. jokes about somebody being funny. I don't need give this movie. All the time. Give this movie to Michael Jai White, right? Yeah, like let Michael Jai White, because Michael Jai White can handle the the slapstick, uh huh. Um, but it also feels like like he would handle the material. I think the thing is, is that we've got like an up and coming writer, an up and coming director. And, and this movie doesn't feel like it belongs to anybody. Like it doesn't feel like a Mike Epps movie. It doesn't feel like a Charlie Murphy movie. It doesn't feel like a studio movie. It doesn't feel like a low budget movie. Like it just, it just kind of like, just like a bit of like a, a bit of a mess. So if you give the premise to a more polished, director you give this premise to i mean you know who did who did this movie kind of is jordan peele with us right yeah. like same kind of like concept you know what i mean like you know family stuck in the house um i think if you if you give this movie to the folks that did the blackening and do a black version of the purge i think it's a lot funnier the right? only thing like, i didn't you know, like about the blackening was the bad guys with the corny white boys yeah, they, uh, they, that was too, that was too, uh, too Frankensteinish. But uh, but but the characters were real. I believe the characters were real, and I believe the and, and the writing was funny. The writing was good. Um, I, I dug that. Yeah. And the black thing was a way better film for sure. Yeah, to meet the blacks. Um, yeah. What so so before we get into some awards because like again it ain't it ain't a whole lot to say about meet the blacks. Um, if you're working on a blank page and you're just thinking about conceptually what you would have done with this concept you know i come to you i go job man you know i met these people they're looking for a halloween movie uh and they want to kind of do like a parody kind of purge type parody like i'm not asking you to write the script in real time but what do you think would make that concept a lot funnier um like you said less um le- uh it's le- it's it's less characters less villains mm-hmm. and the villains it's called meet the blacks so all the bad guys should be white yeah and it's you know what i'm saying but meet the blacks is black it's everybody's black trying to kill the blacks and they're not mm-hmm. even from the area they from the chicago they all came down to chicago right but the neighbors should be like we don't want y'all here kind of like them that, that tv show them yep yeah uh, even though that tv show came out years after meet the blacks but still like it's like oh beverly hills don't want y'all here so they're gonna try to purge you and get you up out of there so now, so now it's a, a the meet the blacks versus the white neighbors, mm-hmm. and not so many white neighbors. Maybe the the nice neighbors that were really nice to them at the beginning of the movie were the ones that really wanted them dead. Yeah. So maybe it's maybe it's a a KKK member that's part that's a young dude that, that's like a, a Michael Rappaport guy that could have been Gary Owen, but Gary mm-hmm. Owen isn't very Gary Owen is is, is uh, he's funny as hell. He's a funny yeah. comedian. But, yeah. but some of these guys don't. <coughs> excuse me. Some of these guys don't are not standouts in in movies. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, uh, 
Yeah, I don't know if that I would have picked uh, Gary Owen for the for I wouldn't pick Gary Owen. I wouldn't pick Michael Blackson. I wouldn't pick Lavelle Crawford. Eddie, uh, I'm okay with Charlie Murphy being in the movie. He's he's great. Um, yeah. he's, he, his presence is hilarious. That's the way he yeah. talks. Yeah, is hilarious. Yeah. But I would have made Brisha Webb the wife. She should. I love her in the movie, but not mm-hmm. playing a teenage girl. That right. I just don't believe. Um, also because I know I don't know her well. I mean, not friends, but I know of her. We've been we've, we've been in several rooms together over the years. Right, so I right, know right. her. Um, but I think she, and I think she's talented, and I think that she deserved to be in the film. But I think she should have been the wife because she would have added some Regina Hall ish type funny to her that character, the sexiness, yeah. the attractiveness, and the um, and then made a daughter an actual younger girl, an actual girl. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I, um, you know, I would have added. Like an Eminem type white boy that either is on the That's side cool. of the blacks mm-hmm. or like a, like a like, uh, Casper or that Casper exactly. guy from uh from uh uh next Friday. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Like you know, so like like an Eminem type white boy that's helping the blacks get out because he's on their side, right? And mm-hmm. they don't trust him the whole movie, but he keeps proving that he is. Or you get like an Eminem type, you know, white boy that is like, I'm the only hip hop guy here. Right, like you know, like y'all taking my shine. That's a funny character, right? Like you know, um, that you can kind of like play with. But I agree, it's called Meet the Blacks. You got the black family in Beverly Hills. All of the villains should be white, unless Batch. If you don't keep Batch in the movie, Batch Batch is funny. Batch is very talented. It's just that I have a tough time feeling him being like a street Chicago dude. Yeah, he reminds me of the the kind of guy, the black kid from the black dude from Chicago that skateboards. Yeah. Not that like it's gonna come, but that can still work. He can't. He he took the Greyhound bus just to come. He's mad at Carl Black for taking his girlfriend away from him, moving mm-hmm. to Beverly Hills. So I'm about to come out here and kill you, and I'm about to come out and purge and kill you during the purge. I would have accepted all that. It was, it was the, the execution was too silly. It was too. It was too uh, King Badge sketches <laughs> like over the top. Ah, ah. He's 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 better he's, than that character. Yes. Like well, like yeah. he's he's he's. Yeah. He's he's as a talent and as a creative. I felt like he like he had to dumb down for this role. Well, well, if you and this is not the, this is not the shit on Batch because I, I rock with Batch. I respect what he does for sure, for yeah. sure. Um, I've watched him for years, even before I got started. So I definitely respect his talent. But he plays a in his content. His his funny is usually over the Silly. top, loud, frantic. True. You know, like when he's shooting at the, the blacks. And he's just mm-hmm. he's very he's very self- I don't know how serious his serious is. Right. Even even I in the just movie. know that 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 I've seen him be sillier better than what yeah, this okay. movie in that, in that case, yeah, I, I get what you're let saying. Let him this is what this movie let him do. Right. Um so yeah, you know, I I you know, not all of them not all of them are gonna hit. <laughs> right? Like, you know, um there's hit and misses. This was yeah. to me a miss. Right, but who's the MVP? <laughs> who's the MVP? Who's the MVP? Mm. Damn, who's the MVP? Mm-hmm. That's the thing. We nobody really showed up as an MVP. Cronut never was. Um, yeah. The wife, no. The daughter. So for me, I almost like give it to the wife. What does he do? What does she do? Okay, so for one, here's how here's how I get to that conclusion. For mm-hmm. one, I think she was actually the best actor in this movie. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, you know, just from like she seemed believable. Her, 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 gen- even if the script was poor, like she executed her, her, her lines well. Yep, and her, um, her, her, uh, her energy, the way she, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Like she seemed like probably the most believable character, mm-hmm. you know, out there. I need you to talk to them. She has like, she was kind of like the the most fle- even though we didn't get a ton of background on her in that relationship. But she was the only person that seemed to have real world problems, right? Like, you know, she would go, you know, to, to Mike Epps and be like, I'm not connecting with the kids. Can you talk to them about that? You know, why is your cousin, you know, I fucking me all the time. I need you to address that, right? When she goes and tries to have a relationship with the kids, 
all of that seems like something that like a normal person character would do. Yeah, she seems right? more normal. So she and seemed so, more normal, and then, and Ali seen the daughter seem more normal to a degree. Because even her, she's like, "My dad's gonna kill you if he catches you." Right. And like, yeah. So my the new moms, Zule, uh, she was the MVP. Because I think so. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. And great, great breakdown of why you said that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, you know, and, and a movie where nothing else makes sense. She's the only like realish person <laughs> in, right. in 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 the movie. True. Um Okay, LVP. LVP. There's definitely LVP. Uh, tiny. Tiny in the bathroom. <laughs> Hey, did you notice that? Hey, yeah, yeah. They kept doing that. Hey, yeah. it was stupid. What are we um, doing here? <laughs> that was like, once again. That's an isolated scene. Like she pulled up to set, um, and she, they, I wonder, did they? Is this was was this Beverly Hills or was this Atlanta? It, this it, could have been Atlanta, and this could have been her house. I think it was Atlanta, and that was her house or something like that. They put her I in. I think it. it was Atlanta. That's I, that's yeah. a great point. That actually makes sense why Michael Black's like because it almost to your point it feels like all of these people kind of parachuted into this movie and they were on set for the day and I think it's because it might have been shot in Atlanta. Right. Right. Even it might not have been but it might might have been. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. And yeah. so the least every the LVP, I mean so many of them None. There were so many. There were so many non-valuable people in the movie. Like Lavelle Crawford's character that was farting all over the place. He was non-valuable. Um, there was two white dudes. One was the KKK member. One was a um, a part of Gary Owens' crew. Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, but I would say the least valuable would be Tiny. Like she came with nobody. I'm assuming she she was a I guess uh Carl Black's wife. Baby and then mama? Allie was like, Oh, I do remember her. He uh he drove her in a taxi one time or, or something like that. Like it was just the, the explaining her relevance to the movie was even bad. It was like, what are we yeah. talking about? Y'all yeah. just throwing stuff together. It doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Who was I'm thinking who was Mike Epps talking to on his way home at the at the beginning of the movie? He was in the car, he was yelling at somebody. And, then he, and, he, and he was like, I don't it was her. It was her. Okay. That, yeah. I, I, I thought so. Yeah. So I, I guess they brought her back, but it was like, what was the point of that? And and so it, it just seemed like Mike Epps wasn't a likable guy. He, he did uh, his character, Carl, Carl Black. What he, he kept saying this in the movie at least four or five times. I'm just trying to make a better life for my family. Is that, is that yeah. so on the nose corny? If you don't keep yeah. saying that, find a better way to relay that. Find because a he's better in, way because to relay he's that. Because he's yeah, <laughs> like I was, I was gonna play a drinking game with myself to take a shot every time they said we in Beverly Hills, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, like they, you established that, but out throughout the whole movie, it's we in Beverly Hills, we in Beverly Hills, we in Beverly Hills. Got to get out of Beverly Hills. It's kind of like you know, because you ain't got no script to work with. But right. I agree the 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 tiny cameo was supposed to be a bigger deal than what it is in this movie. Like the Mike Tyson cameo. What's fucking funny? Because he's looking crazy, he but they got him this. throwing punches. Right? <laughs> like he kept doing the thing, right? Um, and they're cracking the jokes, and and, and Epps goes to jokes like, you know, your mouth smell like ear, you know, your breath smell like ear. I thought that was funny, like that made uh -huh. me laugh. Um, but like the tiny cameo was is is the most pointless. It's one of the most pointless things in a pointless movie, right? right. Like you know, like there is no big payoff for that, right? Like you know, like at least with at least with Paul Mooney and a KKK mask, like that's kind of on brand that's for him in terms of like, yeah. you know, him coming off talking that black shit, but the tiny shit just falls, it just falls black. apart. Because tiny's not funny for one. She's not an actress for two. Yeah. And uh, it just, it was random. Now, maybe it was like tiny, maybe if it was Mary J. Blige or something like that. Uh, I don't know. May I, Even yeah. still, like, I don't, I don't know what cameo could save this movie. Like I like like, you've already got some great cameos. Like the Mike Tyson, like you could have just stopped at the Tyson Mike cameo, Tyson. right? Like that that would have been Mike Tyson actually did good, bro. He was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> what he said, the nigga had a perm, like he had yeah. a perm wig. 
Yeah. And he kept doing this. He kept like he understood that that for he understood that that was funny. Yeah. Let me just keep exactly. doing that. Shit. Like, like, like he's like he's not the MVP, but like no. If they could have bottled that type of energy, yeah. And I think that's what they were trying to do. Like, okay, now let's have Lavelle Crawford. Well, Lavelle Crawford, as funny as he is, he's no Mike Tyson. So, like, you know, like, so the cameo doesn't mean anything if you don't know who Lavelle Crawford is. Right. Right. right? Like, it, it, it just doesn't, you know, mean anything. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think that, like, Tiny's probably the LVP. Um, yeah. And that's- yeah, I don't even, like, I don't want to, like, exist in this world anymore. Like, I don't want to, like, Think about how this movie could have been recast or what would Fresh have done. Um, you what know, Fresh I, that? <laughs> right? Like, it's WWFD? just, you know, Yeah. WWFD? What would Fresh do? That's hilarious. Yeah. I, I would have been like, normally this, normally this kind of movie goes straight to video. Yeah. Um, it has so many stars. It had Mike Epps on it, so that's why. Yeah, it, it, it had so it. many stars attached to it. I understand why why it didn't. Um, I'm happy everybody has continued to work afterward. Right. Yeah, they they, they st- everybody is successful. Everybody is everybody is doing well in their career. I believe so. This this was a yeah. bad movie. It, it didn't really show. Yeah. I don't I don't look at Risha Webb any different. I don't look at Mike Epps any different from this nope. movie. No. Nope. I don't look at Gary Owens any different. Like, um. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I loved I loved D Ray in this. Like I thought the D Ray scenes. He was cool. He was. I, like, I'm gonna I, keep it hundred. I yeah. was so I was tired, and I was so over the movie. Yeah. I said, okay, here we got we got D Ray in this bitch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> I kept I kept going. How much How much longer? Yeah. Like, how 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 much longer? And And I think that's what made the movie drag even, even more. Exactly. And then they get rolled the window up with the gun. Yeah. That was, that was funny. funny. He's that funny. Was fucking so yeah, funny. He, he, he worked. No, he should have been. He should have been Michael Blacks's character. Yep. I even yeah. feel like he could have been. He could have been Mike Epps's character. I think he might have been more and, believable. And Mike Epps could have been Crow Number because Mike Epps yes. is a bigger is a bigger star than yeah. D-Ray, a bigger actor. Yeah. But uh, but Lou, Lou Duvall played a good Crow Nut. But if you're gonna, but Mike yeah. Epps didn't play to me a great leading guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I right. think that I think that uh Mike Epps is great at being a crow nut. And I think that D. Ray Davis could, could possibly be a, a better straight man than, than the Mike Epps. I think so. Because like the character that he plays, the repo man came across as like very believable. He was like, man, like, you know, when you seem like a nice guy, like you should have just paid your payments. Right? Like, you right. know, like, like, like he's, you know, he seemed like he mm-hmm. could be like a loving father. Mike Epps, exactly. And Mike Epps, and I could, and they didn't, they're the same age. I think, man. Yeah. They literally the same age, even though D Ray be saying he's younger, but at the same age for sure. He might even be yeah. older than my caps. But uh but uh he 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 looks so young, he could play so young. He yeah. could play damn near late thirties. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um but yeah, I like I like if he was a bigger star, I would probably enjoy him and Mike uh, uh him and, and Mike Mike Epps is good for Cronut characters. He's good for like one liners, two liners, three he's liners. Good in spurts. Yeah, not the leading guy because all he's gonna do is joke the whole time, even right. during the serious moments. Like even when, right. like, even when like the wife is like, "Baby, um, I just want to make sure we're safe. Are we? Uh, did you do everything you're supposed to do? Do we have the money? We got the money, baby. Damn, come on now." And saying mm-hmm. the kids or the kids don't like me. The kids love you, girl. What are you talking about? Like it is, it's not. It's like he's not even listening to her. He's just trying to yeah. get his jokes off. Yeah. That's what kind of feels like a lot of the time. You know, it's interesting. Before we go to awards, I was thinking about Mike Epps. And Mike Epps has had great success being improvisational. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's so good at it that, like, when he's on and in his pocket, he's given us so many wonderful memories, right? To me, his stand-up feels like a lot improv. <laughs> feels like, like his stand-up doesn't feel like he's worked this material for six, eight months on the road, right? right? Like, it feels like... Like he might go in the club two weeks and kind of come up with some stuff. Right. And I think on this one, even the power of his improv was not able, like when I started to think about how I was going to rank this movie, I was going to be like, but I do like Mike Epps and I like what the Mike Tyson stuff was. And I tried to factor into it, but like on a scale of five black fists to one, 
Meet the Blacks is a one. So I wanted one. to give it a two because I love Mike Epps, but I can't. It's a one. Meet the Blacks is a one. It was it wasn't shot well. It wasn't directed well. It wasn't written well. It was cast as solid. It was a yeah. solid cast. Incredible um, cast. Yeah. Um I say solid because I you know I was a sweet I would have made I would have made um um Lorena, the the wife, mm-hmm. wasn't funny. Yeah, and we didn't get enough of her great acting. She was, and she she did a good job, but it wasn't necessary. Brisha Webb could have did that. Yeah, you know what no, I'm saying? she's and, the only she's the only person playing the straight like the, the straight man. Like right. at least like like make her a, a a a bimbo. Like what's baby girl from um the other kind of like Latina that does comedy? You um, talking about uh, the Sofia the Vergara? From, yeah, from uh, Modern Family, right? Yeah, like Sofia yeah. Vergara, like give her something to do. Like she would have been yeah. funny. Let her She's talk hilarious. in that deep, thick accents, right? Like you yeah. know, give her something funny. You know, have her throw some chili powder on somebody, or you know, yeah. do a ah! thing. Yeah, something. <laughs> right, right. They didn't give her nothing to do, but running around being scared the whole time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And even when they killed somebody, they they never got used to killing somebody and got brave. I was always waiting for that moment. Right, I was waiting for that moment. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Um, but like it was, it was, it was a good cast. I mean, but but she could act, and she was like, she was great to look at, and she was, and she could act too. She had some chops. Yeah, I just wish they, um, we could have did more with her character. Her her character didn't do much. You could have, you could have achieved a lot with flashback with this movie, mm-hmm. right? Because because the movie starts and they try to do it with the voiceover, like in the opening credits, and it just doesn't achieve it, right? Like you know, if you just flash back to. Either like Epps in the house taking the money, you know, or just some sort of backstory on who these people are. But even then, that wouldn't be enough, right? Like you know, um, it still doesn't work. For example, look at a movie like Next Day Air, which is yeah. Mike Epps, yeah, and, and Wood Harris. It shows how they got the money. It shows yep. people looking for them for the money. You know what I'm saying? Better um, executed movie. Yeah, it was. It, it, I was still like, a, we got this, we got this drug and this money, and the street dudes are coming to get us. It's yeah. The same situation. Yeah. Um, just executed better. I mean, yeah. But I, I'm sure this budget wasn't that big. They probably paid more budget. They probably paid more money on the actors than they did on the actual production. Yeah. yeah. And again, really? it's, it's like, and I'm not gonna knock them, you know, for for no. uh, for trying, but 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 we do get to call balls and strikes and yeah. flyouts, Strike. and you know. So, so I don't think like I wouldn't tell the 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 listeners of this podcast if they haven't seen the movie. I don't think you're missing anything, right? <laughs> right? Like you know, right? Um, the only way I would say go watch these movies is to see if you agree with us or disagree. I'll never tell you not to go watch a movie. You ain't missing yeah. much, but if you want to say, you know what, if you watch this show or you watch our show and you don't like some of our takes, sometimes watch the movie and then the comment. And comment, uh, even if y'all start doing video comments, do video comments. Mm-hmm. You, you know, we on IG, you know, multi tone on Instagram, yeah. big job on Instagram. Show, uh, write a video, uh, record yourself disagreeing with us or agreeing with us, and then and tag us in it. Watch it on 420, like smoke some bomb herb, and then it might be different. <laughs> it might be different for you. And, and it might be I'm, different. I'm a, I'm a film critic, man. I'm a filmmaker and a film critic. So, yeah, it might just be like I'm just too harsh. I'm very harsh on films at times. But you know? I mean, but you you typically have more grace because you know what goes into mm-hmm. making a thing. Right. You're not like you're not the chief nitpicker on this. Uh, right. You actually are like you know offer much more grace to actors, to directors, to characters. Um, so the fact that we kind of arrive at the same spot, right? Like you know. Um, and like the takes aren't even hot because they're obvious. Like nobody, there's nobody would be like, I can't believe they didn't like Meet the Blacks. <laughs> right? Like I don't think that there's a there's a hidden like Meet the Black Army that just is going to be like flabbergasted. Like these right. guys got the takes so wrong. This movie is is the kind of movie that even if I ran into Deion Taylor, I would have to tell him, "Yo, bro, yeah, bruh. what you working on now? Yeah, <laughs> right. you know, what's next?" And yeah. I'm and I want us to do Meet the Black Meet the Blacks too. The part two, you know, there's a sequel to this. Yeah, there's a sequel. You want to do that sequel. too? They made you a sequel do that to this. too. Yeah, I know. I got every 
It's our due diligence, there. bro. We gotta see. As a matter of fact, yeah. let me see. Let me see. Uh, uh, let me see who directed that one. Deion Taylor. Yeah. All right. Okay. So maybe there's growth. So uh, we'll be able to give him another shot. All right then. That's but maybe that's not next though. Not I, next. I need a, yeah. We, we, I need. We gonna, we gonna throw a humdinger in there. My pops always say humdinger. We gonna throw a good one. <laughs> a good, a good prob- uh, yeah. We gonna do something nice next time for y'all. Yeah. 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 So we got one black fist. This, this maybe this might be my first one. Um. What did you give New Jersey Drive? Uh, it had to be like a three. Cause New Jersey Drive was very entertaining. It was just yeah. badly written. Um, yeah, th- and the acting was good, but I, I might have gave it a three though or four. What did I give two could play that game? Did I give that a one? You might have. You might have. Nah, you didn't give it a one. I don't think so. I could. Did you? you I didn't like what? that. This is what we gonna do? Yeah, we're gonna go through all the ninety movies we've done, mm-hmm. and go review review our, our 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 fist. I feel like I have this. Uh, somebody sent this to me once. Give me one second. Let me look at the socials. Okay, because I know. That your manager Dame was a. Uh, I have to find. It. We have it somewhere. We've been keeping track of it. Yeah, and, and so, like a yeah. Google document. We need. A, we need all to be able to look at that list whenever we can. Yeah. It exists. I just can't find it right now. Okay. Yeah, it does. We'll have it by next time, right? Um, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. So we can so we can discuss what we've what we've done. What we what how we rated things in the past, other films. Okay, I got it. Hold on, hold on. I got it. I finally found it. Uh let's see how far. It doesn't go back far enough. Scary movie. I gave Scary Movie a one. Oh. You gave it a two. And on this list, this list needs to be updated. But on this list, that's the lowest. You gave Scary Movie a two. You gave Candyman a two. Oh. You gave New Jersey Drive a two. Oh shit! So yeah. so I don't see any ones on your categories. I think this is my your first, first one. one. Yeah, my first one because uh, scary movie was better than this. Sure, much better, much yeah. better, but not much enough better. for it to get a three out of me. Yeah, <laughs> and this is yeah, yeah. Let's meet meet the whites. I right, meet the black, meet the whites, <laughs> meet, meet the blacks, man. That's it for that, this episode, man. Um. I know. Here's the thing. I know we we criticize. We did most. This whole hour was mostly criticized. Uh, was, yeah. was mostly um, critique. And um, that, but that that's what it is. Like when I have movies I really really love, I, I'm 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 gonna do the movies we love, and we'll do the movies that we didn't really care for. Yeah. Um. I I can't just do every movie that I love every single time because that's not yeah. you know that's not really the real. I mean, it's, so it's next it's next movie up. It's next, next movie, movie up. up. And then the, the, this one happened to be Meet the Blacks. Mm-hmm. We watched it. We reviewed it. We ranked it. And now we, we move, move on. Move, 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 and we move on. We yeah. move on, man. Um, do better. That's it. You know, I got projects. I look at it. I'm like, ooh. Eesh. Yeah. I look at sketches. I'm like, ooh. Ah. Yeah, I, I swung. I missed, but I swung. Swung. That's, and that's the point. You know like, that's, I mean, the point is, is that, like, if you would ask me, if I had the authority to like green light or not green light a movie like Meet the Blacks, I might say like, can we rewrite it? Right? Like, you know, but ultimately, if like the director and actress would just based on the talent, I would be like, yeah, let's see. Like, I'm sure like on paper, on paper, I know Friday is a better script. And mm-hmm. I and, and I use Friday as an example because it's kind of like the the gold standard for yeah, the this bar. type of like Good movie comedy. that's that's and and it's not supposed to be a classic like this, right? Nobody's ever heard of Chris Tucker when Friday rolls around, right? Like you know, Phase you I got love. Bernie Mac, so you got you got comedians showing up in it, right? Like you know, you got Ice Cube, who we've only seen do like gritty dramas. We never seen him do anything else. Um, on paper, you don't you don't know that you're gonna get the magic that's Friday. You right. know what I mean? You know, you got DJ Pooh who hadn't written anything before, right? You know, so you got all of these question marks, but you let it happen. And I think that's probably how a movie like Meet the Blacks and Others gets made. Is that like, hey, you've got all the fixings, you've got all right. the ingredients. 
that could make for a very special movie. And then I think that based off of that, you got to go like, okay, try. Because what could have happened is, you know, Epps and Lil Duvall and, and Tyson and all these people could have put on an amazing movie and been like, this movie is fucking jokes. This movie is hilarious. So it was worth the try. It just didn't pan out. Right. I get it. I get it. I agree. That's and it. We're going to see what part two is. So my, my niece... My niece, I, I was I was talking to some people, my family, about me uh, us doing uh, Meet the Blacks, and my niece was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, you gonna do Meet the Blacks?" I said, "Yeah." She was like, "The first thing she said was part two is better." Okay. I said, oh, okay. "Okay, hey, this could be a redemption tour. Like, if part two is better, then I think, then I think we go. This is what we talking about. They had to make the first one to learn from their mistakes. They have to fall down." To get yeah. up and dust themselves up, right? they have to pull themselves up yeah, from yeah. the trash can. Of hey, man. <laughs> right. Pull themselves up from the trash can. <laughs> from the trash can <laughs> of from the, the garbage. The grouch of directors. <laughs> um, if if part two is considerably better, then I'm handing out fucking flowers because I'm yeah. being like, that's growth, and that's what yeah. we want, right? Yep. Boom. Mm-hmm. That's it, y'all. We're gonna see. We'll we'll, we'll do part two. A little later on, you know, yeah. um, but that's it for the, this this episode of Blackbusters, the best movie review podcast in the world. In the world, in the world Craig. In, in the, the world, world, Craig. I'm your host, Big Ja, along mm-hmm. with my co-host. Black-ass, whack-ass tone. <laughs> Black-ass, whack-ass tone. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. We Meet catch y'all next week, man, on Blackbusters, man. Love it. Be good or be good at it. We out of here. Pew. To the man. Blackbusters.